In the last video, we learned the importance of the regression line and how it can be used to make predictions, but we still don't know how to find it ourselves. So that's what we're about to do now. We're going to take the table of data below that represents the percent of students who have free reduced lunch and the percent that pass their math tests. Remember, this is the same data set we used in 4.1. And I have here for you a graph of this so you can see a picture of it. And there's the line of best fit right there. What we want to do is find the equation of that line. So we're going to use our calculators. So let me grab the calculator. If I press stat and number one or edit, you can see I actually still have the data in here from last time. If not, I would have to take the time to go delete out the old data, clear out the old data, and then type in the new data. But I already have it, so I'm ready to go. Once I have the data entered, I press stat, then move to the right to calculate, and number four. So you can either go down, 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 and get the highlight so that it's on number four, or you can actually just press four and it'll happen automatically. And then you want your X list to be L1, because that's what your X, your explanatory variable was in. And then your response variable was in the Y, so that's your L2. And we don't need the intermediate things. The frequency list and store regression equation, we're just not gonna worry about. We're just going to go down to calculate and press enter. Now this should look familiar because this is how we calculated R in section 4.1. There's the R, which is negative 0.688. And you can see at the top, it tells you the order. It's saying Y equals AX plus B. That's your order. A goes in for A. So negative 0.2825 or negative 0.2826, that's your A value and your B is 69.1081. In general, you want to keep a few decimal places. I mean, you don't necessarily need all those decimal places, but we want some of them. So let's see here. I want Y hat, and of course it's a hat because this is an approximation. This is not what it actually was. What it actually, the actual values were, were all these values here. Those are the Ys. So we're just coming up with a model for it. And then I can't remember the numbers. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so y equals negative 0 0.28. Uh, let's round it to 283. 283x plus 69.108. That'll work. You could do four decimal places or three. I wouldn't do much less than that. Maybe two, maybe. But even that would be pushing it a little bit. Oh, no. There we go. All right, so now that we found the regression equation, let's use it to answer some questions because the equation itself is no good unless we can use it to do stuff with. So now we have the nearby Amber High School has 40% their, of their students on free reduced lunch. What percentage does the least squares model, that's another word for this thing that you just found called the linear regression model, the blind and best fit, all that stuff. What um, would that model predict is the percentage that passed the math test. Well, what we need to do is we need to take this 40% right here. That's on free reduced lunch. So that's your X value. So you're going to take 40% and you're going to put it into the equation for X. Now, even though it says percent, we don't want to actually turn it into a decimal. And the reason being, because if you look back at the original data set, these were all percents already. So since we type them in as percents, for whole numbers. We, we didn't say 0.29 in our calculator, we said 29, 29, 23, 60, and so on. So I'm going to stick with 40, not 0 0.40, but 40 when I put this into the equation. And there we have it, negative 0.283 times 40 plus 6908. So negative 0. Point, oops, I did the minus sign, all right, negative 0 0.283 times 40 plus 69.108. And we get 57.788, which is what I just said here. And of course, the unit here is percent because it says right here at the top of the Y variable that the unit is percent. All right, so we would predict that if the school has 40% on free reduced lunch, 57.78% pass the math test. Now, is Amber High School outside of the scope of the model? That's a good question. When you look at 40, 40 was the percent on free reduced lunch. 40 is right in the middle of the data set. So that's a big fat no, it is not. Being outside the scope of the model means that you're far away to the right or far away to the left. And that is not the case, right? 40% is right in the middle of our data. If we had 80%, that would be outside. 
All right, now what about the residual for Ember High School? Okay, well remember the residual is the observed y minus the predicted y hat, right? Let me put that in. So the observed y minus the predicted y hat. There we have it. And that would be negative 6.788. Because you take the observed, which is 51, that's what they really were. And then you subtract away what you thought it would be, your prediction, which is up here. You predicted 57.788. So you take 51 minus 57.788, and you have negative 6.788. Technically, it's a percentage in this one because both of these were percents. This was 51%. Minus 57.788 percent, so the unit is still percent. All right, now for the next problem, we need to interpret the slope in the context of the situation. Okay, so the slope, if you recall, was negative 0.283. It's right there. It's the one that's multiplied by your x. That's always your slope. Okay, so if I'm going to do that, that would be a equals negative 0.283. Now, what we need to remember is that back here at the beginning, we said that the way to interpret slope, let me go back a bit, is that on average, if x increases by 1, x being in quotes, the y is expected to increase or decrease by a. So let me go down here and clean this up a little bit. So we would say, on average, um, for every increase in the percent, for every increase in the percent of students of free reduced lunch by one, or one percent if you like, the percent of students passing the state math test is expected to go down, at least in the state math test, is expected to go down by 0.28%. I'm trying to be very careful in there. This is not a locked in stone kind of a thing. It's more you're describing the relationship. Let me look back at the line here. You see a negative slope here, which means as percent of free reduced lunch increases, we expect the percent to pass math to decrease. It doesn't mean that it automatically happens exactly that way. It means that there's a relationship here and we're trying to describe the slope of that relationship. We're trying to describe how much it goes up by whenever the percent of free reduced lunch goes up, how much does the percent of passing math go down? And that's what we're getting at here. So we want to keep the words on average um, for every, let me put that in, in italics, for every increase in the percent of students around the, um, by 1%, the percent of students passing the state math test is, is expected to go down by 0.28. It doesn't mean it will go down. It's just expected to be about that much. I shouldn't even say, I should say it by about 0.28%. I'm trying to be very squishy with the language because this is not a set in stone kind of a thing. It's more a relationship kind of a thing. All right, now what about the y-intercept? The y-intercept is 69.108. So 69.1. What does that mean? Well, that means that if a school has zero students that are on free reduced lunch, then they would expect about 69.1% of the, to pass the state exam. And that's what I wrote here. A student that has zero students on free reduced lunch should expect a passing rate of about, just say about, 69.1% on, on the state math exam, right? So a passing rate of about that. Again, it's not set in stone. It's just what you would kind of guess it to be. Now, suppose a local private high school wants to use this least squares regression model to make predictions. Why would that be inappropriate? Oh, before I even go further, I should make a note here. Note, um, this value for the y-intercept is a bit outside the scope of our model since no schools in our data set were close to x equals 0%. the smallest we had 
was 15%. Okay, so you want to be a little bit cautious there because it's it's getting dicey because very there's almost no schools that are public schools that would have nobody on free reduced lunch. So to even talk about this is a bit outside the scope of our model. Okay. All right, next, the local private high school wants to use this least squares regression model to make predictions. Why would that be inappropriate? Well, if you look back at the data set, um, this was back a ways. This was only public schools right here, public. So it's not appropriate to use it for private schools because private schools have different rules and everything else that governs them. So all of the data sets were public, so therefore it should not be used to apply to private schools. We could only apply the findings to, similar, to other public schools since the rules and laws that govern private schools are different. Beautiful. All right, last but not least, <laughs> we have a joke here and I want to discuss it. So we have a graph that illustrates um, the, this particular idea, which is this woman is scowling at me. Do I know her? And it says if she loves you more and more every day by linear regression, she hated you before she met, before you met. So we want to make a sketch of a graph that kind of explains that. So let me draw that in. All right, so here we have it. Over here, when you haven't met a person at all, then you're at zero, right? So that's the moment you meet them. And then from then on, you start falling in love with them, right? So some days you love them more than others, and you make a little graph, like I love them at one, I love them at zero, I love them at three, I love them at two, et cetera, et cetera, and you move your way on. So if that's the case and you love them more and more and more every day, then it's going to be a positive relationship, right? Positive linear relationship. So then what happened before you knew them? If it's a positive linear relationship, then back before you knew them, it kind of goes down into this negative zone, which is on the hate spectrum, because if love is up here at the top, then hate is down here at the bottom. So it's kind of making a joke about being outside the scope of the model. If you go too far back in the past, she hated you. But of course, it's impossible because she didn't really know you. So it's making a joke about being a little too far outside of the scope of your model. All right, we're done with section 4.2. I'll see you back here for 4.3.